hello everybody, I'm George from Ireland, so <clears throat> somebody wanted to know about St George, so I thought I'd tell you about him, because his, his, his Saints Day is coming up, well, 23rd of April, it's not that close, but more opposite to do it then, but I aim to please my respected viewers and listeners. Anyway, he's a saint, I'm going to be very close to God, therefore you can offer up intercessory prayers to St George, and supposedly he's got the ear of the Almighty, and uh, he will persuade um, the Most High to look with favour upon your humble petition, and then you'll be blessed. Sympathetic magic. So there are various legends of St George, but uh, there, these are of dubious historicity. Well, that's what they're called, uh, legends. Um, but uh, he's supposedly from, from Cappadocia, which is now part of Turkey, uh, where they have that soft rock they carve house out of the rock. Um, ethnically Greek, pretty Greek-speaking, um, maybe in the Praetorian Guard for Roman Emperor, as in like his personal bodyguard for Diocletian, the one who built that palace at Split in, in, in Croatia. Um, he converted to Christianity, Diocletian viciously persecuted the followers of the Nazarene and decided that this man must be done to death, and then he was, was executed, so he's a megalomartyr. Um, and he's one of the uh, military saints, so his hagiography varies. There's a Greek and there's a Latin version of it. Anyway, he's adulated in Egypt, Ethiopia, England, Catalonia, Aragon, um, Georgia as a patron saint. The country Georgia doesn't take his name from him. His name Gheorghe, as in tiller of soil, um, uh, sort of an arable farmer in Greek is what it means, like the Georgics, you know, those poems on, on farming, although they're in Latin actually. So so uh, Georgians call themselves farmers, but sakartvelo in their language. Um, so there's a, a church uh, uh, to him in Israel where his um, mortal remains supposedly lie interred. It'd be good if they were to, to um, dig them up and do some DNA testing of them and tell us, uh, is it remotely likely this is true? So he's been around in roughly the 4th century um, AD, but uh, he, was, um, he was venerated, hello there, about a century after, after, he, um, was, um, after he died. But the, the story about him fighting the dragon is, is an 11th century fabrication, you know, um, it seems to be <coughs> a reworking of um, earlier stories about um, uh, there's this monster outside a city demanding someone to eat each day and each eat, they give away all their cattle and sheep and the dragon has devoured all of them. And then this ferocious beast says, well, you're going to have to give me your children. And so every family has to give one child. It's this family's turn to give a child this day. Another family has to give a child the next day and another family the next day. Hello. So eventually it befalls that the royal household must sacrifice a child. So the king sends his daughter out to be munched by this um, horrid beast. Um, uh, but anyway, and then St. George shows up in his suit of shining armour, astride a white steed, and he challenges this devilish beast to mortal combat, and he slays the evil dragon, who was representing Beelzebub or whatever, and he rescues this sacrificial virgin, this Iphigenia figure, and of course the king is elated, so he gives his daughter's hand in marriage to St. George, and they all ride off into the sunset and live happily ever after, something along those lines. It's the time of the height of this cult of chivalry, though the reality was very unchivalrous the way knights conduct themselves usually. Um, anyway, so there are various um, uh, supposedly church annals um, telling his story, um, and uh, so certainly Pope Galatius I, he'd said in, in 494 that, yeah, this is, this is a proper saint, um, so a, a Middle Eastern saint. Um, how did his bones came to be in... in, in um, Palestine, I don't think he was killed there, and the Romans lost lost control of Palestine or Israel by that stage. So there are Greek stories about it, and then the Syriac language, which roughly comes from Syria, was they used to speak Syriac there, not Arabic, till the Muslims got there. Um, and uh, so if you, if you pray at the tomb of a saint, supposedly you know, you'll get lucky. It's sympathetic magic. So the two ways to become a saint, you can be beatified and declared blessed by the Pope, and after a few years then upgraded, canonized, and then you are a saint. Or at your funeral people simply demand that you're made a saint immediately. And indeed, um, Pope John Paul II at his, at his funeral, there are lots of Polish pilgrims calling him St. John Paul the Great and demanding that he be, he be declared a pope immediately. Um, so that's it. Now, pope John Paul, in the, in the late 90s, he simply abolished hundreds of saints because the evidence of them was so flimsy, even by the rather that decided a lax standards of the universal church. So St. George's Day is celebrated particularly in Catalonia with books, with red wine, things like that. There's that cross of St. George and the English Crusaders 
from the um, uh, 12th century AD, they started wearing that symbol. And the, the cult of St. George was um, practiced very popular in England. Um, but it was seen as a Germanic name in England for a very long time. So only when um, George, the Elector of Hanover, came to Great Britain in 1714, because he inherited the throne of, of Great Britain, and indeed our throne in Ireland, um, that that became a popular name um, uh, in England, and then George became an incredibly popular name at the time. So um, that was the, the so that's King George the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. I remember as an Indonesian, speaking to an Indonesian English teacher, I told my name is George. He said, do you write it like this? J-O-R-C-E. Joris? Uh, no. I think it's only the most common name in the entire Anglosphere. This is the time when George W. Bush was president. You might have heard of George Bush Jr., George Bush Sr., George Washington, and so on. George Clooney, I mean, <laughs> there's so many Georges around. Um, and so a popular name in Greece uh, to this day, or the surname of George U. I've heard of McGeorge, um, and not sort of many, many, many more surnames. Well, as, as, a, as a Welsh surname, like David Lloyd George. Um, anyway, so he's um, exalted by Mohammedans as well in the Druze religion. That's a sort of uh, 10th century schismatic group well, that they, they, they split off Islam in Egypt. Uh, okay, so that is that is the story of St. George. And then even um, English football fans, they used to sing, Give me George in my heart, keep me English. Give me George in my heart, I pray. Give me George in my heart, keep me English. Keep me English to the end of the day. No surrender, no surrender, no surrender to the IRA in the late 90s, singing that one. Well, thank you. You appreciate my canticling. Uh, so that's um, just a penny's worth about St. George. He's venerated by Christians around the globe, the patron saint of soldiers. So uh, Christianity had initially been a pacifist religion. Drop that one double quick. Um, so not shortly after the Edict of Milan in 313 AD, was it? that uh, Constantine I um, said, well, you're not going to be persecuted anymore. Um, that became a main, that mainstream thing. That's why a re religion, a new one, always starts as, a, as an um, insurgent force and is quickly co-opted by the establishment and becomes pro-establishment. You'll see that over and over again. So, that, I mean, the feast days, it depends on um, which uh, denomination you are and which part of the world you're in. Um, so, anything else you'd like to know? Yeah, so... That's why he's a patron saint of Moscow and so forth, patron saint of various military units. Um, I don't think there's any town called St. George's. and are plenty of churches dedicated to him. Famously, St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle, where Meghan, married, uh, Meghan Markle married that dimwit um, Prince Harry. So there are many icons from around the world which are venerated and thought to have um, magical properties by the faithful. So thank you very much for um, watching my video and please donate to me on uh, PayPal. I urgently need donations to keep the channel going. You'll find me there. Thank you, Simple Lady 17 at um, georgecallahan79 at gmail.com. Toodaloo.